does represent a lot of characteristics or exaggerated characteristics of me or like again like in the sort of social observations it sort of represents a character who's kind of winds up being pushed to the sort of peripheries of society or into dark corners of the internet or something like that because when I was sort of 17 getting into the music industry and like people kept asking me about my sexuality I was like I am the last person who knows what my sexuality is right now I was playing football so much I really wanted to do you can do like go and play a five-a-side match in the minute but like it just it would just feel irresponsible with the numbers going up and stuff Hey, Declan. Hello. First of all, congratulations with the album. I love Zeros. It's a great album. Thanks so much. Yeah, uh, thank you. I, I'm glad you like it. We've had a really incredible response, actually, since it's come out. So, yeah, I appreciate that. It's got a great band sound. Yeah, yeah. I think that was kind of the point of where, where we went to record and bring the band with me and all that. It's all about capturing sort of live rawness of the band. And Jay Joyce as well, the producer on the record is just so so good at capturing the room. So do you mind if I ask you a few questions about specific songs? Yes, of course. Yeah. My favourites of the album, uh, You Better Believe, uh, Be an Astronaut, Daniel, You're Still a Child, uh, Twice Your Size, Sagittarius A, and eventually Darling. It's a long list of favourites. <laughs> good album, I mean, I love the album. <laughs> Well done. Thank so you. good. Yeah, that's great. You don't have to be sad about it. Do you still recall the occasion or the situation when you wrote down was well, Sagittarius A? What was the reason that you wanted to put that on paper? I, I, Sagittarius, I mean, like a lot of my favorite songs I write kind of came out of nowhere in a way. I was just kind of walking home from like a blood test and I came up with the first idea sort of just in my head there and got home and started laying it down on a laptop and doing the little sort of uh, that sort of twinkling synth and stuff and then um, I just learned the Sagittarius A star was the black hole at the center of the Milky Way and I liked the idea of this metaphor of like someone who's so sort of powerful and reckless that they are just kind of like sucking everything in with them and doesn't you know just kind of like boundless energy um, and yeah, in, in a simple way, it just kind of translated into life and obs my observations of the world and um, kind of was able to make a sense of like character and a sense of humanity within within all of that. Um, so yeah, it, it, evolved, it evolved from a few different things and a few different ideas. Like a lot of the songs on the album really kind of, you know, really evolved in stages. Daniel? I kind of came up with Daniel writing Be an Astronaut and I just needed a, a name because I knew it was singing to someone and it fitted into the lyrics there at the start and I you know I, I, I toyed for a while with a lot of ideas of how the album would pan out in terms of there being a character in it and I mean oftentimes again like when you're trying to you have this thing that is almost a mystery to you in writing the songs and you try and you know expand it or try and like look at it too quite closely other than like out the corner of your eye like putting everything together you have to kind of be looking at the, the whole picture rather than the one the one character I think in, in my experience and just be kind of you know in this stream of consciousness writing so like Daniel kind of evolved just out of that little period of time and ended up being a character who I would just sort of weave into the story of the album and just grounded grounds the record I think there's you know because in terms of the songs themselves, like Daniel does represent a lot of characteristics or exaggerated characteristics of me, or like, again, like in the sort of social observations, it sort of represents like a character who's kind of winds up being pushed to the sort of peripheries of society or into dark corners of the internet or something like that. You know, that's, that's his sort of place in the album. So it does definitely represent a lot of, a lot of d different ideas that I sort of was weaving into the album. And yeah, I like that the name's kind of close to mine. I think um, I kind of like the idea that there's a bit of maybe confusion that can arise out of that. And it sort of, 
you know, puts it in a way that's kind of like the album, you know, a little bit real and a little bit kind of fantasy. And I, I kind of, I kind of like that yeah. dynamic on the album. Yeah. It's both. Now this song also made me think a bit about Daniel by Elton John. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And that, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a few tunes. It's like, a, I think there's what, Bat for Lashes of a Daniel song as well. I, I don't know whether that was in the back of my mind. I don't really think it was. I think it literally just, Daniel just came out and it felt, felt like the right thing. Like, Going through names to put in songs is such a difficult thing. Like some of them just work and some of them just do. Like I don't, I don't know. It's it's really really weird. But um, but yeah, that's, I mean, uh, you know, that, that's obviously a, a a big one. Elton John is a kind of, especially that that Yellow Brick Road album actually was a big big influence on this record. I, th I think that's a really okay. great record. Okay. Well, talking about good by Yellow Brick Road, of course, we're talking about craftsmanship in the first place. Would you call yourself a craftsman already in this business? Yeah. Yeah, I've never really used that terminology to describe myself, but I think there's a direct path of songwriting that exists in a lot of my songs, like an element that is based in classic songwriting, that is based in sort of, you know, the, pra the practices of songwriters like fucking Burt, Burt Bacharach and Paul McCartney and Elton John, just like all these, all these classic songwriters, like is... My writing is grounded in that, so um, that, 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 that's, that, that's the way I would sort of tie it to craftsmanship is to kind of working on and, and um, ex expanding songs in quite, a, quite a, a kind of traditional way and then maybe putting it into a slightly more digital or modern landscape. But obviously, yeah, in, instrumentally as well, it's kind of based around raw, you know, organic sounds um, a lot of the time, but just kind of playing with them so i think i think craft craftsmanship is a good way to put it it you know it, i mean in any any you know music making process it takes time and it takes chipping away and you know you kind of improve as you understand what you're doing and what you want to achieve more and i think that is kind of craftsmanship really in, in yeah in any way but yeah i you know i i see that my sort of craft as sit down and writing songs really that's uh, yeah. that is it <laughs> well again talking about craftsmanship what a great what a great song to end the album eventually darling a needs to be shallow. I'm just moving on. that is a great goodbye song yeah it's it, i guess it, it slots in as 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 just that there's actually another great song that could have ended the album but i think Eventually, Darling did it so well, and in kind of a strange way as well. But that's another one. It's kind of built of many different blocks that kind of evolved into one and actually changed a lot when we were in the studio as well. The sort of more grungy, I guess, sections kind of just came about in the studio because it needed a bit of energy. But um, yeah, it really is a goodbye song. Like it is, it's the sense of loss at the end of the album or, or something. <laughs> I said a hopefulness as well, which I kind of ended the first album with, you know, it has to leave a sense of hope because some of my lyrics can be a bit negative or, or a bit, not, not weighing down, you know, they're still kind of pop lyrics, but like I definitely can maybe put myself or put the characters in the album in a kind of negative and violent kind of sense or a toxic sense. or like I often gravitate towards writing Since I was very young, since, you know, Brazil and all that, putting the sort of negative activity on the world. So when it is that goodbye, I think it needs that little glimmer of hope. How do you still relate to your Irish roots? Are they important to you? Yeah, yeah. I, I still have family in Ireland and uh, like most of my family is in Ireland, really. So, um, I, uh, you know, obviously when, I, when it's possible to uh, go over quite regularly and... Um, It's cool. I really like Cork, where a lot of my family's from, and and obviously wound up playing gigs in you know Dublin and and Belfast and that as well fairly frequently. And um, so I just spe spend a lot of time out there, and I think it's just very very welcoming and welcoming culture. And I've always really liked that. You know, when we were younger, we would go over for three weeks even and just drive around and see all of our relatives in Ireland and it would always be the same sort of setup 
uh, they'd be, you know, feeding us, giving us seven up and like, <laughs> it would just be like really, you know, I just always found it so welcoming and so homely, even though I never lived in Ireland. I have a lot of Irish friends in London, to be honest, as well. So I'm always kind of reminded. They're always there. Yeah, always. But I think Irish people do end up just like, even sort of second, third generation Irish people do end up gravitating towards each other somewhere down the line. Um, that's what seems to happen. Uh, would you be the one to write songs about this topic? Um, about certain political issues, like, for instance, Stiff Little Fingers years and years ago, like you two, like so many other Irish who opened their mouth? Yeah, if the time was right. You know, uh, any anything can become a song, really, like any sort of small idea um, can, can sort of become a song. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of finding the space for it and finding the way to put it succinctly. And, like, a lot of the time, the best statement you make is kind of just about is a sort of bigger overall thing, you know, is about a statement on life in general. And just some every now and then you find those moments to be very direct. And I've found that space on tracks like British Bombs, maybe, where I've been very, very direct. But it's hard, to, you know, it's hard to be like, I'm the person who's going to write the song about this, because we don't know how, how things are going to evolve and change, don't know how, um, what's going to need to be said, what's going to have already been said. It's just like, Yeah, I know. Yeah, I kind of it got to a point now. I know when, like, I'm I'm definitely in the zone when I know I need to 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 write something directly, like with like with British bombs. Like, you know, I can't really predict the way my writing is going to go or what it's going to be exactly. geared towards. You make the statement that you can do when you want to do it. Yeah, when it makes sense to do it, and when it when it just comes out, because you know something. It's, it's all well and good writing a song, but you just don't want to... When you're doing sort of, you know, political stuff or sometimes political stuff, it's easy to be very, very... It's a fine line between something that's very cool and, and you know, an act and succinct to something that's very corny, like, or just, like, not really, not really, you know, tasteful. There's, there's, there's a fine line, so I'm very cautious in terms of that, that sort of stuff and making sure that it's, you know... I'm I'm the right person to to say the things I'm going to say and that I'm putting it in the right way and like you know that's that's very that's very important. Two more questions. What do you miss most at this moment? Uh festivals. Okay. I miss festivals a lot. I miss just just being able to sort of um I don't know do 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 things in a normal way like just meet my family in a normal environment and like um be able to play what I miss the most is playing football I miss playing football so much I really wanted to do you can do like go and play a five-a-side match in the minute but like it just it would just feel irresponsible with the numbers going up and stuff um but yeah I miss miss going and having a kick about in the park like you can kick a ball around but it's not you know no. it's not a game it's not a game I know, I'm, a competitive sport is really what actually gets me to do exercise and the, 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 the sort of feeling that you're hurting someone when you're not really like, it's really important. I think physical, be physical when you want to be. Physical. Yeah. Just feel like you're up against something, you know, that isn't actually, that has, that holds no bearing in real life. I feel like you can constantly be stressed about things and like yeah. playing football. is such a nice release because it puts you into a whole new, new social structure and then it's gone an hour later. <laughs> um, When I did my preparation for this interview, I read a few articles uh, by people who are based in the UK. Why is your sexual orientation such an issue in England? Why is it such an issue? I don't know. I, people are just mm, hell bent on getting answers. <laughs> Why, Why is that? I don't know. I, I, I think people just see me one way and want 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 clarity or or see me as sort of hard to pin down <laughs> which i am uh but you know it's been funny you know observing that stuff because when i was sort of 17 getting into the music industry and like people kept asking me about my sexuality i was like i am the last person who knows what my sexuality is right now <laughs> like age 17 like forget about it i have no idea <laughs> um uh so you know 
it's it's been interesting. It just it, it it does, it's like, I mean, is it a British thing? I don't know. I, I I I maybe it's because I've sort of tried to advocate for sort of um, you know d- different LGBT causes over the years and have obviously I guess wound up in a certain space about it. But it, does, it can feel yeah like a bizarre thing to kind of answer to because it's very personal very personal very and it changes a lot and it's like yeah feel uh, you know it, 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 it's never felt like a like a like it's one thing to me and like especially just being so young like yeah it has it's been a weird a weird way to weird thing to answer to but yeah there is definitely um i think buzzwords have a lot to do with it like people put one word next to a song i've written and then and then people just want to talk about that one subject rather than actually seeing the songs as anything more than that like they hear the one word that the song is about whereas songs aren't, aren't really like that it's not like all of my opinions on one to- on football are in brazil you know they yeah it's 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 been strange <laughs> last question um how would you describe 2020 the year 2020 this year so far shit show uh it's 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 been interesting it's been kind of um yeah one word just (laughs) repetitive (laughs) it's been very repetitive i've ended up doing the same things over and over again um and it's not very fun you know i kind of need a sense of adventure or I need a sense of just like new things every day. Like that's kind of what I'm always looking for. And so definitely been repetitive, which has been hard. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, and, very um, let's try to set up a meeting as soon as we're able to do a, uh, yeah, a recording in the studio. I'd love to work with you, of course. Yeah, of course. And uh, yeah, ne- next time it's Eurosonic or whatever. Thank you very much uh, for being here. Uh, I'll, I'll see you very soon anyway. Bye then. Cheers, yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.